loops or repeats in flowcharts. As you've seen in making applications in Scratch or other coding languages, there are many times when you want to use a loop or a repeat to repeat a section of code. As a result, flowcharts also need to be able to represent loops. Luckily, repeats are easy to show using arrows. The repeat is going to be connected to a decision and the arrow returns back to the process that you want to repeat. You can see in this flowchart segment, it will keep adding 3 to something called variable 1 until variable 1 has a value greater than 20. Let's take a closer look at what's happening in the flowchart as we go along. So we start off at the start, we initialize variable 1 to be equal to 0. Then, in the process box, we add 3 to variable 1, which is often represented in this way. We say variable 1 is equal to itself, or equal to variable 1, plus 3. So we're taking that variable and adding 3 to itself and reassigning that to the variable. So at this point we've taken the 0 and we've added 3 to it. So variable 1 is now equal to 3. It gets down to the decision box here and it checks is variable 1 greater than 20? Well, 3 is certainly less than 20, so the answer is no. So we're going to go out on the no branch and loop back to add 3 again to that variable. So now variable 1 is now equal to 6. We get to the decision tree again. Variable 1 is still less than 20, so it goes back and repeats that loop. And it keeps doing that adding 3 each time. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Now, the next time it loops around, it's going to add 3. So variable 1 is now equal to 21. It gets down to the decision. It checks, is variable 1 greater than 20? In this case, the answer is yes. So that means rather than going and doing the loop, it's not going to do that this time. It's going to continue on straight down. So it's going to go out and say the value is, and then it's going to give the value of variable 1, which in this case is 21. And then it ends the process. Now let's look at a slightly different looping process. In this process, we start off like usual where we have a start. This time we're going to initialize a counter. That's the counter that's going to keep track of how many times we go through a loop. Then we do whatever task is required and then we check to see whether the counter is equal to 5. So that means, in this case, I've asked the program to do this process 5 times. So I'm going to keep track of what my counter is set to, and obviously as soon as the program starts, counter gets set to 1. Down here we check, after we've done our process once, we check to see if it's equal to 5 or not, and of course it's not because it's currently equal just to 1. So then we go over here and we take counter, we add 1 to it, and then we reassign whatever that value is to counter it again. So counter, we've taken the value of 1, added 1 to it, so counter is now equal to 2. Once we've done that, we go back and we loop along and we do our process again. So whatever task we're supposed to be doing, and then we come down to our decision again, we check and see is counter equal to 5. No, counter is equal to 2. So we go over, we take counter, we add 1 to it, and we reset the counter to be that value. So counter is now equal to 3, and we continue on the route, and we go back to repeat our process again. Check is the counter equal to 5, counter is 3, and so on. Add 1 to the counter, loop back, and do the process again. Check and see is the counter 5, it is not. So again we go add 1 to our counter, counter is now 5, loop up, repeat the process. This time, however, when we get to is counter equal to 5? Yes, counter is equal to 5. So in that case, we go down and we finish our program. So in this case, the loop is determined, or the number of repeats, it was predetermined to be a specific number of 5. In the previous example, our loop was only dependent on the outcome of some calculation that we were doing. So that's two examples of different kinds of loops, but fundamentally doing the same thing. Now, here's a variation on the second loop. The primary difference here is that we're initializing a second variable called total loops, 
And this time, rather than determining ahead of time that we're going to do the loop five times, we're asking the user for how many times they want to do the loop. Now when it comes to doing the decision, rather than checking to see whether it's equal to five, we're going to check to see whether it equals the value that the user entered. So if the user entered only a two here, it's going to go through and do the loop just twice.